So I just got this Yo Dave CZ457 Rimfire trigger. It's supposed to reduce the factory trigger by almost 50%. That's what they say. Hopefully it's more. More or less, we'll see. Um, you can get it at yodaveproducts.com. Ship from Canada. I ordered this uh, last week, a week and a half ago. Since it's coming from Canada all the way here to Texas, it took a while, but eventually got it in. So I'm about to install it right now. And let's do this. All right, so as it stands, this is the factory trigger. The trigger pull weight right now is at So I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but it's about three pounds. And uh, that's pretty heavy. So this is the lowest I could get it without backing out the screws entirely. I thought that I was able to get it down lower than that. I think they advertised that you could get it down to like one point something pounds, but um, I'm not sure what they have changed with these factory CZs, but I definitely could not get it down to uh, that that weight so uh, right now I'm about to install this uh, Yo Dave and take you guys through the process of doing it and let's uh, let's go all right so I just took off the uh, the action from the stock and the spring comes in this little block you can rush your trigger in this uh, the spring is inside over here some of the tools that you're gonna need are the the nut the a wrench to take off this nut over here so i'm using a little small crescent wrench or something the same size as that this is a 1 16th allen and then i have my I have a punch to take off the uh, trigger a brass hammer some lube to uh, lube up the spring and those should be the tools that i need so the first thing that we're gonna do is set the spring aside. I'm just gonna put it over here. All right, first thing you need to do is take off this nut right here. Um, and then we'll take off the, uh, the pin that holds the trigger. All right, got that loose. Now I'm going to loosen the hex that threads onto the trigger assembly. Alrighty, so I got that part down, put this in the side. And now we're going to take off the uh, trigger. I'm going to use my handy, pen, handy punch and brass hammer. Just a little bit more to go. I didn't get it off all the way. All right. So as I was taking off my trigger pin, this part of the uh, mag block came off, so I'm just gonna put that inside and then reinstall it later, making sure it's in the right orientation. So we're not gonna worry about that right now. Um, a little trick. Instead of putting the pin all the way through, um, I try to keep the pin held by this back area so that you don't have to worry about it. Um, you don't have to worry about lining it later. You just um, have it right there. And then when you're ready to put the trigger back in, you can just pound this back in. So some people would like to take it out all the way, but this is a little trick that I've learned. I'm taking out pins. So this is the um, factory trigger uh, spring. And you can tell this thing is super heavy compared to the Yo Dave. The Yo Dave is a lot easier to press. And that's what's causing the three pound press right there. So that is super heavy. I'm just gonna put that on the side, maybe save it for later, just in case. I probably won't ever put it back in, but 
I usually like to keep parts on hand just in case I ever do. Um, so that spring came from here. It looks like there's grease in here, so I'm just gonna clean out that grease. And instead of using this gun oil, I'm actually gonna use uh, some white lithium grease. All right, this is my white lithium grease, so I'm just gonna do away with this. Uh, this is all-purpose lubricant, white lithium grease by AGS. So, but first I need to clean out that grease inside over here. And we have some Q-tips. Use a little bit of uh, alcohol to take that off. So we don't really want to mix any grease. And dry it off. All right. All right, here is the uh, Yodave spring. I'm gonna put some grease. First, I'm gonna put some grease in this little recess inside of the trigger. I haven't used this in a while, so. Yeah, I have to use a Q-tip. Uh, it's a little bit messy, so I'm gonna get some Q-tip. Just making sure that the grease is inside, is inside there. spring. I recommend using probably a white surface because the spring is black and it's so easy to lose it. But. So I got my spring in there and maybe put a little bit of grease on the spring. Just a teeny tiny, not too much. And spread it out. The grease also helps hold the spring inside that little trigger recess or the spring recess inside the trigger. What I'm going to want to do is there's a hole over here where the trigger pull weight goes. This is the uh, this the the part that adjusts the trigger pull weight. I took it out. So what you're going to want to do is line up this tr this um, spring with that hole. That spring goes inside of that hole. And then once I line that up, then I'm going to put the the, uh, the pin back inside. I mean, the put the pin back inside the um, the trigger. So usually this is probably the toughest part. But hopefully I can get it in the first try. Let's see. All right. It took me a lot to line it up. So that spring should be lined up with that hole. It doesn't actually go inside the hole. Uh, so correction there, but it goes. It should be lined up with the hole so that when you put when you put this in, this is supposed to uh, go inside the the spring cylinder. Actually, and we're gonna have to turn this around, and put it on the block. It's gonna be the easy way to do this. So I'm trying to line up this, the trigger with the hole. There you go. All right, I'm just gonna get a uh, little bit bigger punch and then just make that flush. There you go. And that should be flush. And now we're gonna put this trigger pull weight adjustment screw inside. I probably should have taken out the mag block, to be honest. It would have been easier, um, but we're just gonna move forward. All right, uh, let's try this weight. Oh, well, let's try to do it this way. See what the weight is and then I'll adjust it. Oh my gosh, that's a lot wider than it used to be. <laughs> Man, this is awesome. Oh wow, okay, I'm at 16 ounces right now. I mean, I'm just gonna make sure, I'm gonna make sure that I do a safety check. Ok, 
Okay, it's safe. I mean, I could get a mallet and just hammer this. Um, I don't know where a mallet is, but I am definitely want to do a, make sure you don't do it too light, where if you use a ha rub rubber mallet on your action, that it goes off, because that's not safe. But um, actually, I'm gonna go get my rubber mallet. All right, I have my rubber mallet. This is my safety check. It's safe. I mean, I'm just gonna do that test a few more times just to make sure it's actually safe. Don't do it too hard, obviously. You don't wanna break your action. Um, but that trigger is safe as heck. So, so right now this is at, uh, this broke at 12 ounces. Oh my gosh. That's so much better than three pounds. Fourteen ounces. This is not an electronic one, so there's gonna be probably some error and human error. This is a sixteen ounce. Fourteen ounces. So it's about around twelve to fourteen ounces, probably average of fourteen ounces out of my three tries. Um, obviously, that's not going to be an exact average, but 14 ounces compared to 3 pounds. That is a big difference from before. They advertised at least a 50% reduction, but this was a s over 70% reduction in the sugar pull weight. So I am very pleased and it's safe. I'm probably going to do a little bit more safety taste testing on it. But I mean, so far, this thing is good to go. Uh, now I'm ready to put the rifle back together and test it out some more. Before I do that, I always recommend putting a witness mark on all your screws. So I'm going to put a witness mark right there. This is a mark called Pro Line Paint Marker. The witness mark just tells you that, shows you if something came loose. So that's going to be my witness mark right there. And I'm probably going to put it, I'm going to put it over here and over here just to make sure everything is good. Also on the barrel screws. All right, let's do another safety check. So usually when you drive far these CZs, you wanna put a little snap cap on there to not prevent the fire pin from being broken. I don't think you have to worry about that with the Voodoo, but with the CZ and other rifles, you don't just wanna drive fire it without a snap cap, so. All right, um, I'm gonna put in safety. Make sure it engages. Yep. Where's my rubber mallet? Uh, I don't want to ruin my stock, so I'm just gonna do it right there. Make sure it doesn't engage. All right, that's safe. Sweet. Man, that's uh, so I told you guys it's a 70% reduction. I went from three pounds to uh, about 14 ounces. So I'm just gonna measure it again and confirm how many ounces is the trigger pull. I pulled that one too much. Right now it's around 10, or not 10 ounces, about 10, 12, 14, yeah, about 14, 13, 14. I'm gonna do it again, that's pretty light. That's about where I have my voodoo at. That one broke around 16. That one broke around 14. That one broke around 13-ish. So, more or less around maybe 14 ounces-ish. That one broke around 
13-ish. So I'm happy uh, with that. I don't like my trigger pull lighter than this. I'm not even sure if it can go lighter than this anyway, so. And then, yeah, I'm really happy with where it's at. And I didn't need to spend a couple hundred dollars on a Timmy. Although the Timmy trigger is very awesome. I've used that before and I was pleased with it. But uh, I, I mean, the factory trigger minus the spring is, is awesome. So with the Yo Dave trigger spring, it's definitely very pleasing. All right, there you go.